Hello there, my name is Nigel Rigler and I'm Director of Environment here at Gloucestershire County Council. I'd like to take five or ten minutes of your time today just to talk about Local Transport Plan 3. A local Transport Plan is very important to us in that it guides all of the investment that we make in transport and how that helps support economic development and house building within the, within the county. At the moment we're in the Local Transport Plan 2 process but we're now starting on a journey to start our development of Local Transport Plan 3. Local Transport Plan in itself is not only um, a local agenda, it is also about responding to national priorities as well. And there are five national priorities we have to take into, take into account. The first is the contribution of transport to, to economy. The second is how we deal with uh, climate change and how transport through its carbon emissions uh, impacts on that and how we can minimise that over time. The third issue which is particularly important in a county like Gloucestershire is how we deal with the rurality of the county and how people access the services that they need um, on a need on a day-to-day -day basis. The fourth area is how we make sure that transport contributes to the general quality of life that we get, particularly in urban areas, we get the balance right between people, cyclists, car users, buses and the other ways people need to move around. And finally, that we make sure that people have a quality of access to transport so they're able to get to the services and consume the services that are important for their day-to-day -day quality of life. And then we have some local issues. Um, the, f the first one uh, is congestion, an issue that affects all of us uh, one way or another and how we can use the local transport planning process to deal with that. Um, then there are issues around uh, development and growth and how will transport and transport infrastructure actually support future house building and future economic development. Um, then we have issues of resilience. We all remember the, the, the severe winter that we had in 2009 and the floods of 2007 and even the heat wave in 2003. How do we make sure that we have a transport infrastructure that's fit for purpose in the long, in the long term given the, the challenges we face with climate change. Um, again, with issues in a very large rural county like Gloucestershire, how do we make sure people are able to access services? And finally, budgetary constraints. We all know with the economic downturn and the recession that we're in at the moment that public finances are limited uh, how do we make best use of those to deliver the sorts of transport services that people want? Having set the, having set the context for Local Transport Plan 3, we thought it would be useful to share some facts and figures about just how much money we spend on transport in Gloucestershire. There are five, uh, five categories here on the, the slide. Local Transport Plan uh, refers to the amount of money that we're given uh, regionally, um, that effectively comes from the national taxpayer. Uh, that as a county council we add our own resources um, to. So this is all the spend spending we do on, on highways maintenance and local integrated transport schemes. The second one there is highways maintenance, how much money we spend on salting the roads, filling potholes, resurfacing roads and so on. The third one is about how much we spend on supporting park and ride services, the sorts of things that come in from Waterwell into Gloucester City or Isle Court into uh, into Cheltenham. The fourth one there is community transport. You may well have seen dial a ride services, for example, around operating around your district, particularly important to vulnerable people. And the final one there is how much does the average signalised pedestrian crossing um, actually uh, cost? So just to go back through those things, in your own mind, just think about whether you think the figure on the, the slide is actually higher than lower than what actually we get or what we spend. Um, so going with local transport plan three, £30 million it says on the slide, do you think it's higher or lower? It's actually lower, we get £20 million from the, the region and as a county council at the moment we add about £4 million of our own resources to that. So we have about £24 million to spend each year on road maintenance and on the integrated transport schemes. Turning to highway maintenance, um, we. The slide says £10 million. Do you think we spend more or less than that? Actually, in reality, we probably spend closer to £20 million on, on highway maintenance in any, one, in any one year. 
turning to supporting uh, park and ride, those are the services that go into the go from the outskirts of the of Gloucester into the centre, or from the outskirts of Cheltenham into the centre of Cheltenham. Do you think we spend more or less than the four hundred and fifty thousand pounds of subsidy that's on the slide? It's actually we actually spend exactly £450,000 at the moment in terms of subsidy to park and ride services within the, within the county. Another important plank of local transport planning is community transport. The, um, and on the slide it says £450,000. So do you think we spend more or less than £450,000? We actually spend more. It's actually around £550,000 each year that we spend um, to support on supporting community transport providers to deliver services to vulnerable people. And then the, the classic question of how much does a pedestrian crossing actually cost, one with signals and pelican crossing type, type affair. We've said £30,000 on the slide, do you actually think it's higher or lower? You'd probably be surprised to know that the actual figure is closer to £70,000 on average for, for a pedestrian crossing. So when you think about we only have 20, 24 million pounds available from local transport plan and investment point of view each year, and crossings are at least 70,000 pounds each, that actually there's uh, the money, we have to try and uh, make sure we stretch the, the money as far as we possibly can. Right, having, done, having gone through and done some, uh, done some numbers and tested your uh, knowledge of what we spend in Gloucestershire on transport and transport infrastructure, so it's probably worth just saying a little bit more about local transport plan three. Um, the document itself isn't actually one document, it's a whole bundle of uh, strategies and action plans covering a whole range of issues um, to do deal with um, transport, um, many of them on the uh, many of them on the, the slide. I'm not going to go in, into each one in detail, I'll leave you to do that by looking at the slides and following up all the other documentation that will support the process. But I think you really need to be thinking about that, that anything that relates to investment in transport or improving highways or improving facilities for cyclists, it's the local transport planning process that actually dictates the priorities and dictates the directions that we start to take on some of those things. So it's really important that if you've got an interest in transport or transport infrastructure um, or just more generally in how we move around the county that you engage in the in the local transport plan three process um, and there are plenty of opportunities to engage in that that process at the moment we're doing our early consul early consultation so for the next 12 weeks people have an opportunity to start to engage in the debate about what their priorities will be uh, once that consultation period comes to an end we'll actually be looking at all of the responses and pulling that together with all of our other evidence gathering from the bus companies and the, uh, from the other councils, employers in the organisation, so from all those other interested parties, and drafting, putting together the first draft of Local Transport Plan 3. And we'll do a further consultation on that between, probably between June and September, um, when people will have their opportunities to comment on the more detailed proposals that we're putting forward for balancing priorities and funding over the, over the next 20 years or so. And then that will go through and finally be um, adopted um, in April 2011 um, and that will coincide with Local Transport Plan 2, the current plan coming to a conclusion and then Local Transport Plan 3. Um, starting to dictate where our investment goes year on year. So, thank you for listening. Um, please get involved in Talking Transport in Gloucestershire. We really do want to hear your, hear your views because it will help us make sure we get the right local transport plan through process uh, for the future.